Hi everyone, welcome back to the third episode of Industry Unplugged. Today we have with us Mr. Amit Singhal, founder and CEO of Nexus Health, a healthcare startup trying to bring a meaningful change in the society. He is also an alumnus of NIT Kurukshetra and ISB Hyderabad. My name is Amit Jain, joint coordinator of Celebrate, the strategy and consulting club of LBS IM. Welcome, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, first question we have for you is. what all factors should be considered while investing in a new startup during such times of a pandemic i think I, the the first point is the ideation as, as i was mentioning is idea of the startup is has to be very very clear another thing is the markets you're looking at because these days uh, the pandemic has completely changed the the focus of the investor community as such so they're no longer looking at the traditional uh, markets traditional startups and all because there are core sectors which they're looking at of course is healthcare is one sector which is there logistics is another sector media is another sector and a mm-hmm. uh, few other which they're looking at so four or five sectors are very attractive something to do with content is very attractive now but i think uh, the there there can be many uh, uh, you know companies doing the similar kind of work which any company thinks so but the, i think the the base or the core of every company lies the experience the founders bring in into the any organization because uh, at the end of the day one has to realize that any money which is coming into the company whether it's yeah. form of debt or equity right is somebody's hard earned money right yes sir and it needs to be valued you cannot be spending and uh, somebody's money just to you know for your own will and fancies because the company strategy has to be very very clear the kind of yes. op- opex you in- intend to do has to be very very chart out in terms of the business plan and all and yeah, that's how it is uh, end of the day uh, none of the startups which are there today have made money in the sense of their all their balance sheets for the last few years have been in the red <clears throat> so i think founders should look at the bringing that how much revenue you can generate by the yeah. ethical standard that is one you should look at number two is how soon you can uh, have you know the debt versus the spend ratio yeah. compensate so that uh, the revenue itself compensates for that so the balance sheet is in the green going forward so i think that's is it all depends on <coughs> the kind of uh, uh, ex- energy experience a founder brings into the organization and mm. uh, the kind of investors you try and get in because investors are different kind of investors are there today one is somebody who's just going to put in the money and just going to sit the other is going to be a strategic investor who becomes part of the journey as you building the company right yes. so i think it's more important and evident that you one has the business plan very clear one has the growth trajectory very clear one has the business relationships in the domain very clear yeah but at the end of the day we all have to realize one thing that uh, the business checks are signed by people only right they, yeah. they are not there are no machines there there's no ai engines there they never going yeah. to be ai engines there in terms of doing all that so people have to manage people pretty well and when you talk about people it is about emotions it's about values it's about ethical standards so i think that is the core of the thing that uh, how do you manage that stuff um, and i always quote that example that uh, uh, mahendra singh dhoni and gangli were excellent captains right because they were yeah. excellent man managers right and so i think that is all the crux of the thing is that valuation is one thing but getting somebody's money is important but third thing is valuing that money and building it up is very very important so yeah. according to you apart from the idea of a startup there's a main uh, thing that matters is the leading uh, one who's leading the startup so that's the crux and uh, investors really look towards that factor also yeah they look at that because they will always look at uh, what kind of experience the investor the founder has right somebody yeah. who's fresh out of the block it's like very simple thing that i always believe that people who have done their engineering bcoms and all they should do jobs for 2 3 years experience the the corporate world and then go for management studies because yeah. then it is more holistic it is more thought to, and your uh, you know uh, makes more sense then so yeah, working and all and uh, you've experienced how the world works you've experienced the internal politics you know understand yeah. you want the money you spend the money you know what is the realistic way so the world works so i think that is how uh, the founders or the investors also look at that do you have the experience to run do you have experience to uh, and how much money are you yourself putting into the company right because 
Hmm. You're building a company; it cannot be built by um, it. It requires money to build up. Yeah. And if you are putting your own hard-earned money, then the faith is more that the founder is also putting in more more capital to build the product or services, whatever. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, second question for you, Vyav, is what are your views about the future of telemedicine in India and world in general? So, telemedicine is going to be there. There is no doubt about that because I think uh, we don't know that uh, when the COVID or, for example, whatever the disease it might be coming in, it is. But it is COVID today. It may be something. Tomorrow it may be something else. But yeah. uh, telemedicine is here to stay. Number one. Number two. I think it is more important that. Uh, we value the medical fraternity which is out there because uh, a lot of term, times we have seen that uh, uh, the senior doctors which are there in the industry who work for 25 years 20 years 10 years they are not valued they are equated some to somebody who's just fresh out of the mbbs or md or ms whatever right yeah. so i mean the de- the only problem i have with this is that when you talk about telemedicine you're talking about uh, any company you see they are always pushing their ads on the sense that telemedicine with an expert when you go and check that expert is somebody who's out of one year out of the college he cannot be an expert right? yeah but somebody who's been the ot somebody who's given vaccination somebody who's done like thousands of uh, uh, retina operations and all cataract operations they are experts so i think it is mm-hmm. here to stay but i think the value of the prescription the value of the opinion matters will matter a lot because um, at the end of the day, it is business at the doctor's end for our end for companies like us. Mm. But you have to realize that the value we give to a consumer is the power, right? Yes. And you have to give value to a consumer in terms of how do you give a value to a consumer in telemedicine is that you give them the right opinion, you give them the less dosage to bring the right kind of a treatment to be done. Mm. So I think that is the the, the, the thing to that because it is with telemedicine, it is not long, no longer a hit and trial method. Method, yeah, right. So some things you cannot check. You cannot check the pulse of the consumer. You cannot check the, you know, the the way uh, physical examination happens, right? So I think it is more important that um, good doctors are there, senior doctors are there. They are they are more comforted by this factor. And so uh, next question we have for you is: What are the major areas that you work on while trying to get the investors for a new startup? So we are we are a health company which is working on the uh, the family segment. We are working on the uh, mother and would be mother segment. I think that is, and we are trying to bridge that gap into the family in terms of the health uh, perspective, in terms of the, I think the health record aggregation, in terms of the getting the right experts to the family segment, and also working with a lot of the pediatric uh, doctors on the uh, go, working with a lot of IVF doctors on there. So I think we are our power lies in building an ethical product. A uh, company will work on the very high standards of empathy factor, going with the, and to work on every parameter of the family, whether it's a father, or mother, uh, sister, daughter-in-law, daughter, even a pet. So I think that's what we are intending to do. And uh, as we has covered our this journey, I think next six months will be, you know, using uh, the kind of a uh, confidence the consumers have shown into product. And giving them more value. When we talk about value, we're talking about a lot to do with the fitness ex- aspects of the family, fitness aspects uh, aspects of the mother, and reducing the stress levels from their lives in terms of the health at least. So I think that is our uh, thing because we are also tying up with a lot of the leading brands in this country to promote uh, our own uh, setup. For, for example, we are going to organize a next Matri run, like yeah. uh, Airtel run is done in the next few months. So idea is to have more fitness being done, more awareness being done, reduce the stress levels of the family in terms of the health, get them the right doctors there, build an ecosystem of, uh, I think when we were growing up, there was a, the social st- uh, uh, sentiment or the social strata was much more tightened. It was not, not the way we are electronically connected today. So idea is to bring that back to the forum where the families can connect, families can bond. I think that's the way we see ourselves. That's all we had for you today, sir. And uh, sure. I would like to thank you on behalf of Celebrate and LBSM Fraternity. And I'm sure our viewers will have some great learnings from this.